Hello, my name is Aviva and welcome to another reading vlog. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm currently on vacation in the Bahamas and if you're not new to my channel and you have seen my last vlog, then you know that I'm currently in Bahamas having a great time. I got here on Sunday and it's currently Thursday and I just finished reading The Bad Reputations duet by Krista and Becca Ritchie and I vlogged all of that. It took me, I think, like Monday to Thursday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It took me four days to read those two books and I did vlog my experience. So if you missed that and you want to check out the first half of of my vacation then I will make sure that that vlog is linked down below but I'm starting a new vlog because I am starting to read Sarah J Mass's Crescent City so I have never read this book before and for some reason everybody thinks that I have read it but I have said like a thousand times on my channel on my Instagram everywhere that I don't like reading unfinished series and I really wasn't planning on reading this book anytime soon but the second book in this series is actually coming out right when I get home it's Thursday and I'm coming home on Sunday Day. and I think that the new like book comes out on Tuesday I don't know I have it pre-ordered though so it's gonna just like show up to my house whenever it gets there so I decided that it would be a really smart idea if I read this book now so that I could kind of like keep up with the hype I feel like you know when this book came out last year I wasn't really doing any of this stuff I wasn't really in the book community so I was just like yeah I'm gonna wait it out I don't care if I see a little bit of spoilers like whatever but now that like I have so many friends and like so many people want to talk to me about this and I don't know I just see so much more stuff I've decided I am gonna read this thing so it is very very large I cannot believe how big this book is I mean it's over 700 it's close to 800 pages maybe just above it who knows it is 799 pages damn hopefully I will be able to read this book before I leave Bahamas on Sunday but we'll see either way this entire vlog is going to be both of these books so this one and then I'm going to continue it when I get home and I get the second book and we'll continue the vlog there so I hope it will be fun for you guys to watch me experience reading Crescent City for the first time I don't really know anything about this book other than the fact that it is kind of an urban fantasy it does take place in the multiverse of Sarah J Mass's books because we did see like oh the crescent city when like Aileen was like falling through the world in Kingdom of Ash like I know that there are like tie-ins to like the world that like um Akhtar and Thorn of Glass do take place in but this is its own story and what else do I know about this I know that two of the characters are Bryce and Hunt and I know just like very little about the story but I'm excited to check it out I do know that it is going to be very info dumpy and I am crossing my fingers that I make it through the first 300 pages because I heard that those are the roughest and to be very honest with you I have not read a fantasy book in way too long so I'm not sure how I'm gonna go about this but hopefully it'll be fine hopefully it'll be a great time I feel like if I have to read any person's fantasy book Sarah J Mass is a great way to go because she writes my favorite fantasy so anyway welcome to my vlog um I hope you like the view I'm currently on the beach and I will update you soon when I get further into my reading Okay, so it's currently like 10 a.m. or so and I just got to the pool and I have not started this book yet. Yesterday I posted on Instagram like, oh, I was about to start it and then I got flooded with messages of like, oh, don't worry about the first 200 pages, get past the info dump. It's really hard to get through the beginning but then it's so worth it. And I kind of knew that going into it but when I just heard it and I was like, oh, it's like three o'clock right now and I have to start a book and I only have like two hours to read before I have to go upstairs and get ready for dinner, I like wasn't sure if I was down because I knew it was gonna be like a rough start. So I didn't start it, I ended up just like hanging out on my phone instead. So it's the morning, I've got all day to read and I am going to try to get through this book. I have also heard that it is like not the best Sarah J Mass book ever. So that is also making me a little bit hesitant to read it, but hopefully we'll get through it. So I got about 50 pages into the book and I'm definitely feeling the info dump, but I'm also like slowly figuring out what's going on and who's who sort of vibes. But anyway, um, I'm in the middle of getting lunch and we're right on the beach. It's absolutely beautiful. So it's currently I think like four o'clock or so and I'm gonna get ready to head upstairs because we have dinner reservations and I have to like shower and everything and it was really loud at the pool because the DJ is playing so I figured I'd come to the beach to update you. So I wanted to let you know that I'm officially on page 128 and chapter 11 and I gotta say everybody tripped me out saying that this was gonna be like 300 pages of horrible info dump and after like the first chapter two three I was kind of okay I really felt like the 50 page mark I was already invested in it and then like I 
let me even think I don't even remember but like basically around 50 pages I was officially into it and it just kept getting like better and better so the first chapter was a little bit like hard to read and I feel like if I even go back right now and try reading it I won't even understand it but even though it is slightly info dumpy like I am getting a ton of information it doesn't feel as horrible as I expected but maybe that's because I got so many warnings so I went into it with really low expectations but I'm really enjoying the story so far I've already met Hunt I've already met Bryce I've met like a couple of other characters that like you know I didn't recognize their names but I feel like I know a lot of what's going on so far it is like a mystery of sorts like you know there's this thing demon whatever killing a bunch of people and Bryce is basically right in the middle of it because she happens to know everybody who's being murdered so Hunt is coming in he's kind of like a policeman angel of sorts and he is basically you know helping investigate and like he's bringing Bryce in all that sort of stuff and you know the world is very interesting I kind of like the idea of how it's like it was a human based world and then like all of these other supernatural things like came here and is like now populating the earth sort of vibes like I don't know I am very into it like I didn't think I would be liking it as much because I haven't read a fantasy in so long but 130 pages in and I am already fully invested the next day Hey guys, so it's currently Saturday and this is my last day here. I am leaving very early tomorrow morning. I have like an 11 a.m. flight, so like our driver is taking us to the airport at like 8 a.m. or something. And I realized that in my last vlog, I didn't actually tell you where I'm staying. And in case you were wondering, I am staying at the Cove in Atlantis in Bahamas. And it's an absolutely beautiful hotel, so I wanted to show you the lobby as I walk through it when I go to get my husband some coffee. So I'm just going to flip my camera really quickly. I mean, come on, how freaking beautiful is that? So anyway, I am walking to Starbucks now and I wanted to tell you that I'm not sure if I'm going to be reading much more on this trip only because this is my last day here and it's actually a little bit cloudy. So I don't know how much time I'm gonna be spending at the pool and my husband is around today. So I have a feeling I'm kind of gonna be like hanging out with him a little bit and therefore we'll just like try to get pictures cause we didn't take like any pictures on this trip. So we probably should do that before we leave. So I'll have to go to the beach and try to do that. And then I don't know, we're just gonna like chill. We have a couple of stuff to do. So I don't know how much more reading I'm gonna get done. So we're about to go and get our COVID test because we're leaving tomorrow. So we need to get one like right before we get on the plane. And I never told you guys, but I blistered up my feet the first day that we were here and it has been really painful to walk everywhere. And then I was stupid enough to pick my blister because I never get blisters to know that you're not supposed to pick them. And now my picked blister is like all bleeding. Do you want to see? I mean, look at that. It is very painful to walk around. Also yesterday I burnt my legs and now I can't put them straight because like the part that is the most burnt is by my knee and like I can't straighten it up because then all of my skin like squishes together. So basically I'm in a little bit of pain, but it kind of makes sense because I came here and the first day that I was here, I got suntan lotion in my eye and I had to go get it flushed. And now the day before I'm leaving, my foot is bleeding and I'm all burnt and can't walk straight. So to you, it might not look like I moved, but I actually did a lot today. After I got my COVID test, we ended up going down to the beach and hanging out there for a while. I actually got into the ocean, which I wasn't planning on doing because I'm not a huge fan of the ocean, but it was kind of a lot of fun. And I went like, you know, waist deep. I didn't really like swim in it or anything. But anyway, we ended up hanging out on the beach for a while. And then we ended up walking and getting lunch. And then we walked some more and we got ice cream for dessert. And then we walked all the way back to our hotel and then we plopped ourselves down because we're kind of in a food coma. I almost wasn't going to update you guys because I'm literally so full. I didn't want to talk, but that is what I'm doing now after this. And once I actually can stand, I'm going to go take a shower and we're going to have a chilling night in bed before we head out in the morning because we have to wake up really early. So we're just going to watch some Netflix and chill, you know? So that's that. This is the end of my Bahamas vacation. It was a great week. I cannot wait to come back. And I will continue this vlog when I get home and I pick up House of Earth and Blood again. 
So it's now Tuesday and it has been half a minute since I've updated you, but it's okay. I wasn't doing much. I like, you know, had a travel day home and then I had like, you know, an unpacking day slash a get back to normal day. And now it's Tuesday. So first of all, release day. It's a pretty funny story because yesterday I was looking to see if my pre-order had shipped because sometimes they do ship before the release day so that you can get it on time. And I had ordered mine from Target and I was looking up and it all of a sudden showed that it was like back ordered. I'm like, what the hell? And now it's not gonna arrive for for like a week or so supposedly it hasn't even shipped yet and it's already the morning of the release day just by the way so I had a little like you know half a panic attack sort of thing because I'm like I had planned this out perfectly to finish the book in time for the next book to arrive like a couple of days after the release day it was going to be a perfect overlap you know and now that wasn't happening so I ended up going to Amazon and ordering one from there also because Prime will arrive by like tomorrow night so now I'm all set it was a half a scare but I think it worked out I'm still like checking my phone every five seconds to make sure that the Amazon one shipped out, but whatever, that's that. Anyway, I did get further into reading the book. I'm currently on page 280. And before I get any further, I wanted to say that I'm officially making this video spoiler filled. I actually asked Instagram the other day what you guys would prefer. And the majority of people did say to just make it like spoiler filled, do a more of a reaction based vlog. So that is what you're gonna get. So for all of you guys who haven't read this book yet and you don't really wanna hear any of the spoilers, I apologize, but maybe you should like, you know, click out now. But with that said, I am 280 pages in and I'm officially at the point where Hunt is now moving in to Bryce's apartment because, you know, she needs a bodyguard and everything like that. And we just finished up the bombing. So now there are three murders and one bombing and Hunt is now living in Bryce's apartment. Very exciting stuff. Also, I've been noticing a lot of the like other book or whatever you want to call it, like the other series overlaps. And I did a couple of, you know, tabs because I wanted to go through this with you because I'm just like, I originally didn't realize that this book was going to have like overlaps to like the other books in Sarah J. Mass's multiverse, like that there were going to be so many like things of like, if you know, you know, sort of stuff. So anyway, on page 157, it was saying basically how Rune has shadow abilities, like to summon and walk through shadows. And it was an unforgivable insult because like he didn't take the those powers from his father he took it from his mother's side which means that his mother is like shadow singer magic sort of thing which is Azrael from Akatar. which I'm just like maybe that's why Azrael is the only one of his kind or like you know he's just not very popular in his world because maybe his type of whatever he is comes from another world which is where Run's family is from and I'm just like whoa also on page 174 they i don't forgot what was happening but basically it says that like the fey have magic that skew towards flame and wind and like how all of the different fey get their general magic from different elements like water and rain and mist and i'm just like that sounds a lot like both of the other worlds. First of all, like in Akatar, there are like, you know, the summer people who like, you know, could control the water, but then also with Throne of Glass, Flame and Wind, that's Aileen and Rowan. And I'm sorry, but like, I see that. And I'm just curious as to how all of these Fae interact. Maybe did these Fae come from the Throne of Glass world, or maybe did the Throne of Glass people come from the world that these people came in before they all migrated to whatever world they're in. I'm just like, I don't know. I am seeing all of these little things and I just don't fully know how to you know pinpoint it and then also the last thing that I wanted to point out was that on page 239 it says that like it's been two centuries since Shahar died Hunt and it was basically saying like you know Hunt is still mourning the girlfriend that he had 200 years ago and I'm like well, Rowan was mourning for about 200 or so years before he went and found his mate. And I'm just thinking that that is Sarah J. Mass's like timeline for Faye to like finally be able to move on. So I don't know. I just thought it was funny. I wanted to point that out. But anyway, that is about it of stuff I wanted to tell you. So I'm going to continue reading today. I am going to keep tracking my book to see when it ships out and I'll update you guys later. So on page 287, it was the morning after Hunt had his first night over at Bryce's house. And Bryce was saying to him, isn't it exhausting to be an alpha hole all the time? Do you guys have a handbook for it? Maybe secret support groups? And then he's like, an alpha what? And she's like, alpha hole, possessive and aggressive. You know, you males who rip your shirt off at the slightest provocation. Who knows how to kill people in 20 different ways. Who have females falling over themselves to be with you. And when you finally bang one, you go full on mating frenzy with her, refusing to let another male look at her or talk 
talk to her, deciding what and when she needs to eat, what she should wear, when she should see her friends. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And she's like, your favorite hobbies are brooding, fighting, and roaring. You've perfected about 30 different types of snarls and growls. You've had a cable of hot friends, and the moment one of you mates, the other fall like dominoes too. And God help you when you all start having babies. And I just thought that was so funny because it was kind of like Sarah J Mass making fun of her other series about how like everyone just like mates up and like they're all possessive and that's what everybody loves about Sarah J Mass's books at least that's what I love I love the mating vibe sort of thing and it's really funny how against it Bryce is and then it kind of said how like oh well you're kind of doing that whole like you know growling sort of thing so Bryce is kind of the aggressive one in this relationship even though Hunt is so on that vibe of like rise and Rowan and everything like that so anyway I just thought it was really funny to point out I also wanted to show you my reading buddy for the day that's Cooper and he's sitting there and right now he is extremely fluffy but we're getting a haircut for him tomorrow so in case you didn't get to see him before his haircut that's how he looks now and you'll get to see the after sometime later so I just got to page 355 and we just found out that there has been another murder. Literally the last thing that I read was there has been another murder. So we just finished up the scene where Bryce and Hunt went shooting with like Rune and a couple of other people and like Bryce did the perfect shot and then like all of a sudden we're getting all of the hints that like Hunt is kind of falling for Bryce and like they had this little like stare down and in their heads they're like I see you Quinlan and I like all of it and then she's like right back at you and I'm just like I am all here for the flirting to start I mean we're almost halfway through so it obviously was a slow burn but at least we're gonna get another like 400 pages of their romance build-up sort of thing I also wanted to say how I'm really enjoying the urban fantasiness of this like the fact that there are guns and there's phones and selfies and sports and TVs like everything about it like it's while it's a regular urban fantasy like that's what you get with urban fantasy Sarah J Mass has never done that before so it's a real big trip to see her normal fantasy elements mixed in with like you know a regular setting that's making an urban fantasy like just the whole idea of it I'm really here for it like I'm thoroughly thoroughly enjoying the fact that this is an urban fantasy by Sarah J Mass. I also wanted to point out one more thing um on page 325 they were talking about the horn you know the horn's missing they're looking for it and they were saying how like they're trying to figure out why everybody wants it even though they know that the horn is broken and it was saying like to open the doors between worlds, they wished to use the horn to reopen the northern rift. The horn's purpose wasn't merely to close doors, it opens them too. It depends on what the bearer wishes. And I'm sorry, but that is a word key from Throne of Glass. So I just got to page 448 and Bryce and Hunt just got attacked by the demon and I have this weird theory that I have a feeling I'm going to be wrong about but I want to say it just in case it ends up panning out and I have a feeling that Rune and this nurse that he has now met twice and doesn't even know her name yet is actually the queen that his father wants him to marry and I don't know why I feel that way but I feel like it might be a thing and if that does end up happening that she is you know who I think she is then it would be a really fun like romantic side storyline you know also that moment on the roof literally two seconds later was very queen of shadows vibes in a good way and it made me remember that I wanted to say a few things of how I can't help but like look at the similarities between all of Sarah J Mass's characters and other series and I was thinking like doesn't Hunt's slavery like aspect of his being remind you of Rysand under the mountain like we never actually really got to see Rysand struggling those years when he was under like Amarantha's rule and whatever but getting to see Hunt being a slave for whatever his name is like Mika or something like I don't know for some reason I can't help but think that how Hunt is feeling is kind of how Rysand felt at that time and then also there was another thing oh right so Selena and Nehemia and Bryce and D Danica, is that her name? Yeah, I I'm very bad with names, but Bryce and Danica, Selena and Nehemia, do those friendships not feel like it has a lot of similarities going on? I'm not even going to get into it, but if you think about it, I feel like, you know what, there are things. And then lastly, Connor 
and Sam from Throne of Glass. So you know how like, you know, everyone knows that Sarah J Mass does not pick the first love interest as, you know, the forever after kind of guy. And that's one reason why I didn't want to read this book yet because I didn't want to fall in love with Hunt. And then in book two, all of a sudden something changes. And then like I was in love with him for a year sort of thing. But I did hear this theory that Connor is actually the first love interest and that Hunt is going to be the end game because, you know, technically he's second and I was thinking like you know what Connor kind of feels the way that Sam was set up like the way that it was like kind of in the past but we also got to see a little bit of the present when we saw in Assassin's Blade their relationship sort of thing so I'm trying to like see if it's actually going to happen like maybe Hunt will actually be able to be end game because we already had Connor the way that Selena had Sam. Also, another thing that I can't help but like parallel in my brain is the fact that Hunt is currently feeling really guilty and he's like had so much on his chest for so long about what happened in his past with like Shahara or whatever her name is. The same way that Rowan felt really guilty and like brought it along with him for however long about his past loved one. And then also think about the fact that Bryce is currently at a very low point in her life. The same way that Selena was at a very low point in her life when she met Rowan. So the same time that Hunt and Bryce spent in their mental timelines is the same time that Selena and Rowan met in their mental timelines. So I'm currently on page 482 and Bryce is in the middle of cooking Hunt an apology dinner. And I realized if Bryce offers Hunt food, isn't that a mating ritual sort of thing? But I was thinking maybe it doesn't work that way because they aren't aware that they're mates yet, you know? I'm just really hoping that Hunt is endgame because every time Sarah J Mass like pulls a fast one on us, my heart breaks every time and I just... I don't want to go through that again. Okay, I'm sorry, but I can't help but keep on paralleling all of these books. On page 486, Bryce is talking about the fact that when Danica died, she stopped dancing because they used to do it together. And then when she was gone, she couldn't bring herself to do it anymore. And I'm sorry, but does that not sound like when Selena stopped playing the piano when Ahemia died? And I'm way too lazy to go check in Throne of Glass if this is actually like a word for word similarity thing. But it says, I won't let myself dance anymore because it brought me joy and and I didn't. I don't want to feel those things. I know it sounds pathetic. And then he's like, oh, it's not. And she's like, I'm sorry, I don't have bags on you. But my point is, is that she doesn't want to feel the things that she felt when she was dancing. And I feel like somewhere Selena said that about music. The next day. So last night I ended up getting to page 606 and I really do wish that I ended up stopping a couple of chapters early because I had that really nice scene with them on the couch. We got the first hookup and I was like, okay, that was a really good spot to stop. And then I was like, you know what? Let me just read a little bit more because maybe it will get even better. And then you know what? It got a little bit worse and it was really late at night and I'm like, I have like 200 pages left. I can't read all of this. I have no choice but to stop. And I'm Unfortunately, I had to stop at the time when we found out that Hunt was lying to Bryce like for the past week or so. And I'm like, what the hell is this going to be a twist? Am I going to hate Hunt now? And don't worry, I still believe in Hunt because like obviously he's going to be redeemed. There's 200 pages left, but I'm not going to lie. It did hurt a little bit, but with that said, I do plan to finish this book today. I have a couple of stuff to do, but my other book is coming today, which means that I did overlap it really well. So all worked out fine. I did want to point out a couple of stuff that I saw when I was reading last night, though, that I was just too lazy to update you in the moment of. The first one was on page 471, and it says, Your kind, fallen, were made in Mingard by the Astery, but the Fey, the Shifters, and many others came from their own worlds. The universe is massive. Some believe it has no end, or that our universe might be one in a multitude, as bountiful as the stars in the sky or the sand on the beach. And I just, I like how she's finally referencing the fact that all of her worlds and her people that she comes up with are from a like multiverse of sorts. I mean, we've seen it, seen it a bunch of times already. I just, I thought that was a really solid point. Welcome, Cooper. He wanted to be a part of this vlog. Um, second, we have page 501. I just wanted to point out that I really enjoyed that shower scene, and I happen to have thought it was a really um, good mix of In Queen of Shadows, the bath scene, and A Court of Mist and Fury's nightmare scene.
Also on page 510, we saw a mention of Kelpie, which we had met in A Court of Silver Flames when Nesta went down to the lake to try and get that crown, if you remember. And then on page 545, they were talking about like synth and like what exactly it was. And they were saying synth is synthetic magic to replace real magic of which you have none. It gives human veneer power and strength for like an hour. And then it can seriously fuck you up, make you addicted and worse. And then, you know, we're just talking more about it. And I'm sorry, but does that not sound exactly like the drug from Six of Crows? Okay, and then because I'm trying to convince myself that Bryce and Hunt are going to end up being mates, I'm trying to look out for all of the possible foreshadowings of it. And on page 567, they had their first kiss. Bryce was getting her leg cut open and Hunt was being there for her. And basically it says like, you know, it was just a hint of a kiss, a feather soft glancing of his lips over hers. A star bloomed inside her at that kiss. A long slumbering light began to fill her chest, her veins. I mean... That sounds like a mating bond to me. And then on page 580, it was after Hunt got his wings chopped off and Bryce was laying down next to him in the middle of the night and he woke up and he's like, you know, but soft feminine breathing filled the darkness because Bryce was right there. A sense like paradise filled his nose, settled him, soothed the pain. And I'm sorry, but only a mate sense can do that to you. Okay, I'm sorry. I actually have two more thoughts I wanted to say before I forget them. First up, when Hunt was getting his wings chopped off and then Bryce did that crazy scream and like ran to him and everything, did that not feel like the moment when, you know, Feyre almost died and Rysand like, you know, basically freaked out? I'm just saying like it feels very similar. And then also the fact that Hunt is a slave and the fact that Rowan had that connection thingy to Maeve, do you not think that it's possible that Bryce Bryce is somehow going to buy off Hunt the way that Aileen bought off Rowan. A few moments later. Wow, what a call did I make. Bryce tried to buy Hunt before he left with whatever her name was. I can't even say it if I tried. But my point is, is that I thought it, I called it. It didn't work out how I was hoping it would based off of past experiences from Sarah J Mass. But I did see it coming. By the way, Cooper came home from his haircut and he looks absolutely adorable. Do you want to see? Aren't you cute, Cooper? I mean, come on. I love him. Wow, did I call that. I just got to page 654 and we just found out that the Medwitch is the queen that I expected her to be. And I'm just saying I'm excited for that storyline because I think that will be a really fun romantic thing to happen between Rune and, you know, whatever we're going to call her now. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, wow, I don't even know what to say. Those last 150 pages or so were seriously mind-blowing. I literally finished the book two seconds ago, and I don't know what to say. It was nuts. I mean, yeah, wow, I'm very happy to know that book two is waiting for me. It actually showed up this afternoon at like two or three o'clock when I had like 100 pages left or so. So I'm like, oh my God, I gotta finish the book because I need to start this one because it finally arrived, you know? So anyway, um, I seriously have no words. Um, that was nuts. I'm really excited to see you know, where book two goes. I thought for some reason that book one was going to end on some sort of cliffhanger, but I feel like it kind of wasn't. I still don't regret not reading it until now because I am happy that I didn't have to do a reread of that because there was so much information in that book that I really don't think it would have been smart of me to jump into book two without doing a reread of book one. But because it was so big, I'm happy kind of that I didn't really have to do that. So anyway, um, I said originally at the beginning of this video that I'm going to be reading both books in this vlog, but this vlog is way too long and I've decided to split it up in two. So I'm ending this vlog here, even though I didn't really give you guys a lot of thoughts on like what I think about the ending of that one. It's kind of because I'm just jumping straight into this and the story is going to continue. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to give this video a like and make sure to come back in a couple of days when book two's vlog gets posted on my YouTube channel. So 
For now, I'm gonna say goodbye. Leave me a comment down below if you wanted to comment on anything that I said throughout this video. You can also DM me on Instagram if you wanted to chat about anything specific. I love chatting about books. I am so down to talk about these books. And anyway, I'm going to get started on book two. So I will update you guys again in my second vlog. And until then, thank you so much for watching this video. And until next time, enjoy reading. Mm -hmm.